Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the very first ITC photography demonstration video. I'm your host, Garrett King. Now in today's video, we're going to look at a video that I did using a form of ITC that I call hydromancy or scrying. Now to explain what ITC is, it's really just the simple act of using electronic devices in which to communicate with spirits on the other side. Now, when I first started doing this, I was operating under the impression that I was communicating or photographing people that had passed on to the other side. Now, as I've gone through this and some of the images that I've captured, it has kind of changed my perspective on it, that it's not just people um, who have passed on. It is, it's animals, it's instr, or sorry, <laughs> interdimensional beings that possibly still exist and are alive, but on a different plane of existence. Now, I, I say that because in one of my audio sessions that I was doing, I asked, can you tell me how you died, and the response that came back was, who said I died? And that just really got me thinking, like, whoa, you know, is it possible that we're communicating with those who are still living, but just on a different dimensional plane? It's very possible. I don't know. Um, but with some of the images that I've captured... I've also discovered that it's not just people. It's not just human beings. I've captured animals. And like I've said, I've captured like interdimensional beings that are simply not human. Now, the one that I'm going to show you today, the detail is just extraordinary. It's, it's one of the most amazing captures that I have. Um, really shocked me when I saw it. For the very first time, I was just so stoked um, that this came through. I was so excited. I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but it's, it's it, I don't know. For me, it's truly amazing. We'll see what you think. Let me know in the comments. Um, but again, ITC, it's instrumental transcommunication. It's using electronic devices to communicate with these spirits. So when you're watching Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventure, Adventurers or any show like that and they're using a ghost box or any other electronic device, it falls under the category of ITC. Now, I'm using liquid, okay? So how is that electronic? Well, I'm using a digital camera, okay? So it kind of falls into the same category. Now, some people call this scrying. Other people call it hydromancy. I actually prefer the word hydromancy, um, but people are more familiar, I think, with the word scrying, but I'm just going to refer to it as hydromancy on a go-forward basis. Okay, let me go ahead and open up a video here. Now, this video was shot October 22nd, 2020 at 12.31 p.m. This is the video. And a couple of things I want to point out is you do not need to purchase anything special should you want to try this yourself. And I want to state too that any single one of you can do this. It doesn't require any special skills because I don't have any special skills. Uh, this is just something that I... Started doing when the pandemic hit. I was watching Huff Paranormal and listening to some of his recordings. I bought a couple of spirit boxes and spirit apps and was, you know, uh, using those and, and getting really amazing communication with my father and with some other spirits that I have no idea who they are or, or where the communication is coming from. But it was just really fascinating. And... 
the more I was reading about it, then I learned about video feedback loop and I learned about hydromancy. Now, like I was going to say, you do not need anything special to, to do this. I just have a black plastic bowl. That's it. Filled with water. And I have a video camera. Now, you could even use the camera on your phone if that's the only camera that you have. Now, I went out and purchased a couple of different cameras <laughs> um, that shot in 4K and, you know, just all this different stuff, especially when I was doing the video feedback loop. But on this particular one, I was using the DJI Pocket. And I think it was the second version when I shot this video. Okay, so it's just a little handheld uh, gimbal camera. It's like maybe around 400 bucks, I think. And it allowed me to shoot at a faster frame rate. So I think the highest was like 240 frames per second, which ends up being a lot of frames. And when I record these videos, I only shoot for a short duration of time, anywhere between 30 and 40 seconds. Why? Well, because I'm shooting 240 frames per second. So if I was going to sit here and shoot a five to 10 minute video, I'm going to have a lot of frames to analyze at the very end. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be super, super tedious uh, when in fact it's already tedious anyway. So as you can see, this video came out to be two minutes and 55 seconds. That's not how long I was shooting. It was only 30 seconds or so. But because of the faster frame rate, it creates a longer video and makes that video slow motion. Okay. So again, you don't need anything special in order to do this. Now, I did add one thing to the water. This is something that you can get from artoftheroot.com or you can go to amazon.com and purchase it there. I am not affiliated with this company at all. I don't get any kind of kickback or anything for saying it. Not even sure if they know that I even use their product because <laughs> um, I purchased it from Amazon. But it's called Spirit Oil. And it was just something that I did as a test just to see what would happen. No one told me about it. No one suggested it to me. It was just something I saw and thought, you know what? I'm going to try it. Let's see. That's all we can do. So the spirit oil is supposed to help enhance your communication with spirits. Now, they suggest just taking a drop and putting it on your forehead or somewhere on your body when you are getting ready to do like some kind of spirit session, whether it be with the Ouija board or meditating or whatever. What I did was, is I put a couple of drops in the water. That's why there's this kind of murky, filmy crap on the surface of the water. It's literally the spirit oil. And the spirit oil is like, I don't know, around seven bucks or something on Amazon. It's, it's really cheap, but it's not... A must-have. It's just something that's optional. But personally, I feel like it did a tremendous job on assisting these beings coming through, especially in this particular video, because the face that came through is of a being that I believe to be interdimensional. Now, it kind of has a extraterrestrial look to it, but the eyes are more human than the typical big black eyes that we hear people talk about when they are, you know, talking about their experiences with alien, alien abductions or anything like that. There is clearly pupils in the eye of this being, but the shape of the eyes are large. So this could even be a hybrid. I don't know. But it just has that. It has several different feels to it. It, it feels interdimensional. It feels extraterrestrial. 
It feels like it could be a hybrid, but at the same time, it also looks a little aquatic, like it's something that might exist and live underwater. Who knows? Who knows? But it's super ass clear, folks, when you see it. Now, the downside is that only half of the face came through, not the entire face. But what did come through, again, is super clear. You'll see it straight away. Um, I have no doubts in that uh, because anyone that I've shown it to just straight up like this, like I'm about to show you, when they see it, they go, whoa, <laughs> what's that? So. Let me go ahead and just play a couple of frames uh, or seconds of this video just to show you what the the whole process looks like. Um, so let me just go ahead and hit play. Okay, so I'm starting to move the water around and I start out by moving it forwards and backwards and then I'll start moving it side to side and just getting it swirling in every direction possible. Okay, just agitating the liquid. That's all I'm doing. Now, while I'm doing this, I am verbally asking if any spirits or interdimensional beings can come through and show themselves to me. Now, before I actually start the session, I will sit down very quietly for just a couple of minutes and try to clear my mind before I start. And then I will also say a protection prayer. Now, my protection prayer is is it's private, it's personal, it's something that I keep close to my, my heart, um, and so I don't tell people what my protection prayer is. But your protection prayer can be whatever you want it to be. It can be the Lord's Prayer, um, anything, that as long as it feels like it would protect you in some way, okay? Now, that's just something that I do as a precautionary thing, because we are dealing with well, we don't really know what we're dealing with, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, we're dealing with with communication from a different side, okay? The other side, a, another dimension, I don't know. But I just feel like it helps to say some form of protection. The other thing that I do is I state very clearly that I am not looking to communicate with any negative beings that I am only looking to communicate with those of love and light. Now, that's not to say that something nefarious isn't going to try to come through and show itself. I've had it happen. But I've never had anything manifest itself into my home, okay? Because A, I, I do my protection prayer, and B, I make it very clear verbally that I am only asking them to come forward and show themselves that they are not invited into my home. It is as though I am asking them to come up to a window, look through that window, and then leave, okay? And then the last thing that I do is when I am finished recording is I say that I am closing this session, so that it doesn't leave the session open. Even though I go and dump out the water, you know, get rid of it, whatever, I just want to make sure that I am closing anything that I may have inadvertently opened, okay? It's like, I've opened the blinds, now you can come through, or not come through, but now you can come up to the window and look through, show yourself, and then leave, and now I'm closing the blinds again, okay? So you can't look through anymore. Okay, so the video played through in its entirety. Now, this face that comes through, it comes through at around 1 minute and 46 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance it right here to 1 minute and 40 seconds. I'm going to let it play just to show you how basically impossible it is to see these things in the moment or when you just go back and are playing the video. This is why every frame has to be analyzed 
frame by frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. Okay, it's already appeared and gone. Now, I couldn't even see it, and I knew where to look. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how quick it is. So let's go back. I'm going to go back to 1 minute and 45 seconds right here. And now I'm going to advance this frame by frame. And the area that you want to look at is right here where I am circling with my mouse. Okay, this is where the face is going to appear. And when it shows up, folks, it's going to be so clear that you're going to see it straight away. I shouldn't even have to point it out to you. I will, but you, I shouldn't have to, okay? <laughs> so here we go. So I'm just advancing this frame by frame. All right, now it's going to get ready to form. It's starting to form right now. And again, it's right in this area. Okay, now it's really starting to come into play. And then on this next frame, it's almost like it'll just pop in there and it'll be super clear. Boom, there it is. Okay. It's right here, and we can clearly see the eye. We can even see the pupil, and we can even see what looks like light reflecting off of the surface of the eye. It's incredible. Now, there is one thing that I want to point out, too, just very quickly. Let's go back to the very beginning. So as you can see right here, the very starting frame, the only thing that we can see in the water is the reflection of the window blind of the window that I'm right next to. Now, I like to do this near a window so that I get that natural light coming in. But what you can clearly not see is my face. You do not want your face anywhere near the bowl of water because people will accuse you of it being, if you capture something, of it being your reflection, okay? And the other thing that you cannot see is the camera that I'm holding. I'm holding it at an angle so that it doesn't show up in the water, and my face is far enough away that it does not show up in the water either. This is what you want. It doesn't matter if there's a window there or anything else shows up in it. You just simply do not want your face to show up or the camera itself. Okay, so let's go back to 1 minute and 46 seconds. And advance this. Okay, the face shows up. And then the very next frame, it starts to dissipate. You can see where part of the eye is, and you can still see kind of the shape of the head. But it's gone. It literally shows up crystal clear in one frame only. That's the importance of analyzing every single frame. Now, this is what I do when I am putting my images onto Instagram. Or if I really want to look at something that I think I see, but I want to pull out the detail, okay? Now, what I do is I take a screenshot, just like so, and I'm going to load this into a program called Aurora HDR. Now, what this program does is it applies essentially HDR to the image. HDR is high dynamic range. It looks at the image, it looks at the the dark sections, the light sections, and tries to balance them out. And then it helps pull out the detail that already exists in the image. It's not adding detail. It's not adding things that wasn't already there. Okay. 
So I'm going to apply a preset, and this is more of just color enhancement, but it's not affecting the original image in the sense that it is adding or subtracting something that is already there, okay? So this is the preset that I'm going to use. It just, again, you can see how it helps pull out the detail. We can really super clearly see the eye now, the eye socket. We can see the mouth and then some kind of line area that it's probably something to do with the nose. It doesn't look like a human type nose. And this is where I say, you know, it kind of has like a flat area where the nose, nose should be, which lends to that being extraterrestrial, interdimensional, and also kind of that aquatic look, like it belongs like it underwater or something. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase, increase, increase the HDR clarity just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring down the blacks, the shadows, and the highlights just a little bit. And I think contrast is probably okay where it is. Now yeah, we'll do minus 13. That, that's fine. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this brush. Now what this brush does is at first it makes you think that I'm going to paint onto the image. I'm not. What I'm doing is only painting the detail in the area where the face shows up. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So if I apply the brush, all that detail that you just saw on the image, but was being applied to the entire image is now only being applied to where the face is. Okay, look at that folks. That is incredible. And how in the hell can anybody sit here and say that that is pareidolia? It's just your brain seeing what it wants to see. I have to disagree. All of the major elements of a face are there. The shape, the forehead, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the chin, it's all there. There's no way, in my opinion, that that is pareidolia. Okay? All right. And maybe we can bring down the contrast just a little, little more. Okay. Now... What I'm going to do, and I've put this image on my Instagram page, um, so many of you may have already seen this, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, again, just take a screenshot of this. I'm going to load it into Photoshop, and what I'm going to do is simply, because it's only half of the face that came through. So what I want to do is... I'm just going to put a guideline here and I'm going to rotate the face and put it right about there. Let's zoom in just a little bit because what I want to do is copy one side of the face and flip it over to the other side so that we can kind of get a true representation of what this would look like if the entire face had come through, okay? So let's just go ahead and make a selection, like so, and we're gonna layer via copy. So I'm just copying this one side, and we're gonna flip it horizontally move it over, match it up. That's why the guideline is there. Move it off, 
merge this down so that those two layers are together. And lo and behold, folks, there we have it. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And again, I have to disagree that this is pareidolia, that it's just my mind seeing what it wants to see. <laughs> There's too much detail. There's too much extraordinary detail to this for it to be an illusion. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to do, and then we'll wrap this up, is I want to just remove everything that's around the face. So that all that we have left is just the face on the screen. Now, some people have said to me, well, why is it always faces? Well, it's not. It's not always just faces. But I do get a lot of faces, and especially at the very beginning when I first started doing this, because you have to think that that's what I was asking them to do. When I say, can you come through and show themselves, what else are they supposed to show me? If they showed me their left foot or their, their right elbow, I mean, I'm probably not going to recognize it the way that I would recognize something like this. Now, I have gotten an image where it looks like there's a thumb, a very distinct thumb. Um <laughs> I mean, you can see the, the thumbnail and, and everything, and, and we'll look at that one later. And I've even gotten some that are f like full body or close to full body. Uh, one of them was one that looks like, I call it the naked man, because, you know, you can clearly see his his chest. He's not wearing a shirt. Um, and it, he almost seems to be posing, which is interesting. And we'll look at that one maybe next time. But let's just get rid of all of this. Because I'm going to do one little more enhancement to help draw out what we're seeing here. I mean, <laughs> we can already clearly see what we're looking at here. But so let's move this center. We still have some residual parts of the screenshots coming through. So I'm just trying to get rid of everything that's on the screen, except for the face itself. Okay. Now I'm going to take this layer and duplicate it. And I'm just going to add it on top and just change the blend mode to multiply so that just kind of it's just adding like further contrast, I guess, to the image itself. Not much. I mean, you can see this is without it. This is with it. It's very subtle, but it's just kind of darkening up some areas. Now, what I'm really wanting to do, though, is I want to enhance the eyes so that we can really, really get an idea of the eyes, because if you look again, you can clearly see the pupil and then you can see where the whites of the eyes are. But because of the Aurora HDR program, it, uh, there's still some, just a little bit of residual parts of the other muck in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to levels and I'm going to just really bring the levels of this up to kind of a brighter white because I'm wanting to draw out the white areas of the eyes. Okay, so maybe about like that. And then I'm just going to come back in and on this particular layer, I'm going to just erase around the eyes and the rest of the face. And 
and I want to keep the pupil. And again, just like so. Okay, so I just kind of increased the white area of the eye and that's it, okay? It was already there. I didn't add it. I'm just making it stand out more. So there you have it, folks. I mean, look at that. That is incredible. That is <laughs> not human, whatever it is. It's not human, but it is absolutely as clear and as plain as the nose on your face. That is some kind of being. And it came through in liquid. Right here. It's right there. We can see it in the water. And again, we can literally see how it formed. And if you pay close attention, you can see, like, this is the area of the eye as it's starting to form it starts to clear out a little more, and then boom, it just jumps right into place. The next frame, it dissipates, but you can still see trace elements of where the eye was, the shape of the face, the mouth, and then it's just gone. Just like so. I mean, you can see it. Let's just kind of bounce back and forth between... I mean, that's incredible. It's incredible. And again, clearly, that is not human at all. But there we have it, folks. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. We'll look at uh, a different uh, video next time. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to pull the big one of the bigger ones out up front and give you guys an idea of how this method works and the type of things that you can capture if, if you decide to do this yourself, you know, um, and who knows what you might get. I've gotten some amazing things. I've gotten animals coming through, dogs, uh, things that look like animals, but not any type of species I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've gotten... Beings that come through that, just like this one, absolutely do not look human. Now, I have many human images that have come through, yes, indeed. But it's just interesting and fascinating to me that these interdimensional beings come through. And one of the things, one of the questions that I have when I'm, when I'm doing this and, and you know, talking about this with other people is a how are they able to hear me when i am calling out for them to come through and show themselves how are they hearing just me how are they hearing that call and one of the things that comes to mind is that well my voice is a vibration and you know, operates on a frequency. The water being agitated works on a vibration. And maybe these things exist in a different realm, different dimensional plane where they can easily hear and pick up those vibrations, those frequencies. I don't know. I don't know. But that right there is absolutely amazing. All right, going to go ahead and end this here. So hope you enjoyed this and I hope you guys are looking forward to what more I have to show. I hope. <laughs> All right. So until next time, everybody take care and have a great rest of the week. And I do promise there will be more 1111 matrix code stuff coming up. Uh, just doing a lot of research right now. So in order to kind of fill in this gap, I wanted to kind of introduce you guys to ITC. So till next time, 
Take care, and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.